My name is Eric Spensley, and today I'm going to show you how to make this simple DIY tool storage cabinet on Spensley Design Co. I built this outfeed table a couple months ago with this auxiliary work surface underneath. And unfortunately, it's become a dumping ground for tools that don't have a proper home. But let's fix that. I picked up some 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood from my lumber yard, and since I don't own a pickup truck, I had to roughly rip the pieces down so they could fit inside my small Honda Civic. Even if you do own a truck, managing an almost 80 pound sheet of plywood by yourself can be tough, so I prefer to do most of my rough breakdown with my circular saw and this handy Craig rip cut guide. And while I don't typically show it, I always clean up the edges that are left by the circular saw by running pieces through the table saw with a feather board just to help hold it against the fence. That's just a little behind the scenes tip for you. And while yes, I do own a track saw, I know a lot of people don't and honestly using a long square and a circular saw is probably faster than breaking up the track saw anyway. Just remember that you always have your table saw to clean up those edges if you need to. All right, so instead of watching me endlessly cut down plywood, because nobody wants to do that, let's jump into SketchUp and see how this whole thing is going to come together. So here's how this thing is gonna look when it's finished. The main construction is made from three vertical panels, a top and bottom panel, and a back panel. And to help make everything a little bit more rigid, I'll add some interior braces too. Slap some drawers in there, and you're all set. I should also mention that if you want to get the full step-by-step -step PDF plans, as well as the SketchUp file for this project, I'll leave a link to them down in the description below, as well as on my website at spenceleydesignco.com. Those plans walk you through every step of the project and include a fishing cutlass and imperial, and for everybody else in the world, they're in metric too. Now enough Disney Channel animation, let's get back to the garage. With the main panels for the case cut down according to that cut list, I'm gonna assemble everything with some pocket holes. If you haven't seen this bad boy yet, it's the new 720 Pro from Craig. The only thing that you have to do is adjust the depth collar on the drill bit, and it automatically adjusts to any thickness of material to give you perfect pocket holes every single time. Just push the handle down, drill your pocket hole, lift the handle back up, adjust your material, tighten everything back down, then continue the process until you've got all of your pocket holes in place. One tip when using pocket holes is to use clamps to get all of your pieces in the perfect spot before driving the screws in. This will make sure that the assembly of your cabinet is much easier and also make sure that everything stays nice and square. And no, there really isn't any need for glue because these are plenty strong without it. After attaching all the main pieces together, you've got, oh geez, stop it. You've got to break down some material to reinforce things. If you've been following me for any length of time, you likely know that I don't use a miter saw. So I always use either a crosscut sled or in this case, a miter gauge for all of my crosscuts. Just trim one end, flip down the stop, then you're good to go. I'll drill a few more pocket holes in these brace pieces, clamp them onto the back of the cabinet, Fire in some more pocket hole screws, and this thing is looking mighty fine. All that's left to do now is cut down some quarter inch plywood and toss it on the back of the cabinet. I'll pre-drill and countersink some holes before driving in some screws to hold the back panel in place. If you've got a good eye, you'll likely notice that the back panel doesn't exactly fit, but that overhang was intentional. I like to come back with a flush trim bit just to make sure the back panel is perfectly flush with the edges. One last thing I need to do before the main cabinet is finished is to cut down four squares that will act as reinforcements where the casters attach. These are going to be attached to each corner of the cabinet with some bolts, but to keep them in place for now, I used some of the Starbon CA glue and then sprayed the adjoining surface with the activator. Then I could press the two pieces together to get an instant bond. The CA glue cures instantly as soon as it touches the activator. That way I can move on to attaching the casters and keep working on this thing. I first added a small spacer piece and then traced out the mounting holes before grabbing my dullest Forstner bit. Yeah, I told you this thing was dull. Let's speed it up. 
After drilling the larger recess, I came back with a smaller drill bit and went all the way through, that way the bolt with a washer can sit below the surface. To make things easier, I clamped the casters, ooh, that was hard to say, I clamped the casters in place, ooh, before adding another washer and nut on the underside to hold everything in place. Those bolts will be much stronger than just using screws, and now let's move to those drawer boxes. A few days ago, I made an entire video in depth going through my whole process of building drawers, and I'll link that in the description below. So rather than reiterate everything I said on that video, I wanna take a quick second to thank Craig for sponsoring today's video. All of the blue tools that you've seen me use today, like this Craig Precision Miter Gauge and this nifty flip stop are high quality yet very affordable tools that make my life in the shop much easier. After I got all the pieces for the drawers cut down to the specifications and the plans, I could quickly cut a dado for the bottom panel to slide into and then grab my Craig 720 pocket hole jig again. Now, the cool thing about this is that when I change to using half inch material, the only thing that I need to do is adjust the stop collar on the drill bit and the jig does all the other adjustments automatically, which makes sure that I get perfect pocket holes every single time. If you wanna check out all the Craig tools that I use on this build, click the links down in the description below. And again, huge thanks to Craig for sponsoring today's video and helping me get one step closer to being able to quit my day job and make woodworking my full-time career. Now that the main structure of the drawer box is assembled, I can cut down some quarter inch ply to fit into the groove in the bottom. You could absolutely use half inch thick ply here if you really wanted to, but with the drawer this small, it's kind of overkill. But hey, don't let me tell you how to live your life. The beauty of a drawer design like this is that when you slide the bottom panel in place, it ensures that the drawer is perfectly square. And to hold that panel in securely, I'll pre-drill and countersink a few holes and then fire in some screws. Easy. Now that the drawers are finished, you might notice that the edges of the cabinet are a little sharp. To prevent getting any bad boo-boos or splinters, I'll quickly break the edges with an eighth inch roundover bit. Before I jump into showing you how to install the drawers, leave a comment down below that says pickles. I read every comment that's left, so when you write pickles, it lets me know that you actually watched the video. So if you've got any questions or just wanna support what I'm doing here, write pickles down below and I promise I'll get back to you. To install the drawer slides, I'll first start by depressing the small tab to separate the two pieces. I can then add a small scrap to raise the slide off the surface of the cabinet and position it back far enough so that the drawer front thickness is perfectly flush with the outside of the cabinet. I can then drive in a few screws to hold the slides in place and remove the spacers underneath. After reattaching the smaller part of the slide hardware, I can set some slightly thicker scraps down and set the drawer box on top. I can then slide the drawer box out just enough to reveal the first holes and drive in some screws, slowly working my way back until the drawer is fully secured. I can then remove the spacers and this drawer works perfectly. I want this bottom drawer to be pretty tall, so I set my track saw in the drawer and place the scrap piece of wood on top to give me ample space for the drawer above. Then I just repeated the exact same steps as before, setting it back the correct distance, securing it with screws, reinserting the inner part of the slide, setting the drawer box on some spacers, and attaching all of the screws. I'll redo that process over and over again until all the drawers are positioned exactly where I want them. No measuring needed at all, it's that easy. To install the drawer fronts, I first lay down a spacer piece and then rest the drawer front on top. To get the sides perfectly even, I inserted playing cards on both sides until the drawer front is wedged in nice and tight. Then simply clamp the drawer front in place and pull it out. From the back side, you can drive in some screws to securely fasten the two pieces together, slide it back in, remove the clamps, and you're all set. For the drawers above, I just use playing cards to shim each side and repeat the process of clamping the drawer front in place and attaching it with screws. And once you finish up installing the rest of your drawer fronts, this project is done. This is a pretty basic cabinet that can easily be modified to store